Hello guys, and thanks for joining the Walk Weekly. I am Walt Latham, and I am your host. Uh, this week's show is going to be about one of the greatest threats to our civil rights in modern times. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Did you know that there's a case coming in front of the Supreme Court on November 13th? In a couple of days. Wherein Byron Allen is suing Comcast and Charter. Comcast and Charter being the two largest cable operators in the country. And the, the background on this is that Byron Allen wanted to lease a cable network and he would decline. And Comcast declined, Charter declined, so Byron Allen decided to sue in federal court. By doing it in federal court, then, you know, it wouldn't be dismissed. They would have to hear it. So he went to federal court, and the initial ruling was Byron won against Charter, but lost against Comcast. So Comcast decided to go to, to appeal it. So they went to the appeals, to the appeals court. And the appeal courts ruled in Byron Allen's favor against both cable companies, Comcast and Charter. So Comcast wasn't, and Charter, they didn't take that, like, you know, lying down. They just said, okay, let's go to the Supreme Court. And the underlying law that Byron used in his lawsuit was the 1866 Civil Rights Act. And that law was passed one year after the end of slavery. It was passed to ensure that African Americans, when they entered a contract, could sue if they were discriminated against based on their race. And this covered more than just African Americans, but specifically it was to address the needs of of, of, uh, former slaves. So, what we have is Comcast and Charter are holding up the 1866 Civil Rights Act to be tested in the Supreme Court, which is conservative leaning. It has Donald Trump's appointees. And what Comcast and Charter also did, they approached the uh, Department of Justice to help them. So, the Department of Justice, Trump's Department of Justice, wrote an Atticus brief. That's a legal document laying out support for Comcast and Charter in this instance against Byron Allen. So the Supreme Court is going to hear on December 13th an RL wherein Byron Allen lawyers going to argue against Comcast lawyers, Charter's lawyers, and the Department of Justice lawyers, because the DOJ is entering on behalf of the corporation. And the thing is, if if they are successful in breaking down the 1866 Civil Rights Act, that is going to roll back our rights to 1865. Because this is a long-standing law. So what they're using, the argument they're using on the Comcast and Charter side is the but-for cause, meaning discrimination has to be proven 100%, which is impossible. All right, you have to prove that someone discriminated against you because you were black 100%, and that's not even practical. You can't do it. They can say, oh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't um, hire you or I didn't agree to a contract with you because you were a black person. They can say, well, yeah, you were black, but then again, you had on tennis shoes. Also, if you are suing because you think a, a, a job lays you off or fires you because you were black, 
you have no recourse because you will not have a lawyer take your case on contingency. Because there's no way in hell someone can prove that they discriminate against you 100% because you were black. Oh, yeah, he was black, but, you know, his shirt was wrinkly and, uh, you know, and so you come, in, come into all that subjectivity. You bring that to bear. So there's no way you can prove that. So, Bob and Alan Sue. A little bit more background on this is the fact that Byron Allen sued originally, he sued the NAACP, he sued Al Sharpton, he sued NAN, because they entered into what they call a memo of understanding, an MOU. The corporations give donations to the NAACP. Uh, the Urban National Urban League, the Urban uh, the National Action Network. I mean, they get big donations. But the thing is, they don't speak for us. How can Al Sharpton say he speaks for black people? Or the National Urban League? How do they say they, they speak for us? So how can they be entering into getting donations from these large corporations and, oh, we're good, you know, you're doing the right thing. And then, you know, they get money on the, you know, on the side, which is public. But we don't pay attention to that. So we, apparently we don't care. So I, I don't understand that. If you think about it, do you understand it? Did you know it? So anyway, the original lawsuit was against, you know, uh, Al Sharpton and uh, Nan and the NAACP, but they decided to back Byron Nelson, so they were dropped from the lawsuit. And you had a Congressional Black Caucus come in behind Byron Allen, but not all of them. Forty-six of them didn't didn't agree to back Byron Byron Allen. Or you should want to know who are those 46 members of the CBC who didn't back Byron out. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Comcast spends $70 billion a year for content, but they only spend less than $10 million for black-owned companies, or two black-owned companies. Out of 70 billion? Jeez. It is amazing that we're not watching our environment. Now, if you have overt, overt, overt let me say that right, that overt racism, but it's a covert racism that you really got to be concerned with. And that's what's being done in the courts. Where you, it's not publicly uh, in the public domain that much. It may, you may see an article here and there. I checked the New York Times. And I read the New York Times religiously. And I did a search on this case. I couldn't find it. My wife listens to MSNBC a lot, CNN. I didn't hear anything. There's nothing on the Byron versus Comcast and Charter case. Very little. If you Google it, you get a couple, like the Creo, you may see something, right? Maybe the Economist or something. But you don't you don't see you won't see anything. So in my research, I was able to extrapolate uh, uh, enough. But what I had to do is go back and rebuild my research. I had to rebuild it, taking pieces from the uh, congressional record, uh, taking pieces from the Creo, taking pieces from what I saw on YouTube, uh, the Breakfast Club. I had to reconstruct, I, you know, I had to extrapolate from different things my research so that I could be able to speak to you in an informative manner.
and pass on this information you so badly need. November 13th, the case will be heard in front of the Supreme Court. And Byron Allen will have 30 minutes, his lawyers. Comcast had 30 minutes, but they saw give 10 minutes to the DOJ, Department of Justice, so they can argue for us. And we take the other 20 if necessary. So what they're trying to do is roll back our rights. All the time. This is a major threat, people. I am not trying to lecture you by no means. I'm trying to inform you. But they are trying to roll. We can hit on multiple fronts, and we're just not aware. We're just not aware of it. Someone that was to ask me, why are your guys like that? I mean, I couldn't tell them. I'm going to say, well, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that that's something that's, uh, you know, everybody, is, you know, within the black community is like that, naive or ignorant to the facts or ignorant to what's going on. And that's why I encourage you guys to know local, know national, and know global news. Just don't confine yourself in a box. Know what's going on. You can't afford not to. If you don't give a damn, what about your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, and your great-great-grandkids? You don't care about them? Hey, I'm not lecturing. Food for thought, right? Anyway, all right, just, just stay on that and, uh, and let me know your thoughts. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share. This is Walter Latham again, and this is the Walt Weekly. We'll see y'all guys next week. Thank you very much.